My name is Mikolo Kalisnik and I'm working on bringing you to the automated UI testing in Java video course. Before we start, let's introduce the author who prepared all the materials for this course. Mikolo Kalisnik is the software test automation engineer with 12 years of experience. During the practice, he operated with many different technologies, including Java, C Sharp, Ruby, JScript, and many other customized solutions. He is actively participating in technical review for packed publishing books. So let's get started with the course. This video will lead you through the old sections and major items we need to cover to gain consistent practical knowledge of how to use Java for automated UI testing. The entire course is split into seven parts, shown on the screen. We have introduction at six sections. During the entire course we will create some sample tests and make different enhancements targeted to exercise some framework types adding more flexibility and dealing with some complex cases. This course is mainly practice-oriented. It means that most of the time we'll work on the code. Also, it means that most of solutions we'll implement are taken from real experience. This slide mainly shows the steps we'll go through during the course. Let's briefly go through all of them. At the beginning, We'll get introduced to some theoretical background of test automation framework. We'll get set with tool sets and initial environment setup. Since the course is mainly practice oriented, it is important to make all necessary preparations to make all further practical samples working. We'll start with writing sample tests and initial enhancements which should uh, make our solution more compact as well as more flexible. In particular, We'll add configuration, we'll attach data source and make data-driven tests. Also, we'll make some enhancements to make tests running in parallel smoothly. We'll start adding abstractions around UI elements and pages. We'll implement all necessary steps to wrap all actual element references into logical structures, which should help us understanding what we are doing. Also, we'll add some common functionality which together with page and element abstractions will form the basis for our test automation solution we build during the course. We'll keep looking at uh, more complicated cases. In particular, we'll go through several cases showing how to make our test cross-platform. Here, we will exercise the same test for web and mobile applications. Additionally, we'll add some major functionality needed for verifications as well as will practice interaction with complex elements. We'll build the object-driven framework sample from the scratch. We'll define major design of the framework and implement all components one by one. Additionally, some complex cases will be covered. It will end up with sample test update to see how tests normally work if we use this approach. We'll go through the keyword-driven approach. We'll take one existing engine and work on the functionality which will help us making our sample test keyword-driven. Major enhancements will be related to giving elements informative names for better readability. Then we'll extend our solution with a major set of verification functionality we can use. Additionally, we'll look at the interaction with compound elements. In the last section, We'll continue looking at the keyword-driven approach, where we'll exercise more complicated cases like data transfer, dynamic expressions evaluation, parallel execution. Additionally, we'll go through some abilities to integrate our tests with external systems. In the end, we'll summarize all things we learned and achieved during the course. During the course, essential part of the time, I'll be writing the code with detailed explanations of what has been done. Since this course is dedicated to Java, it is necessary to viewers to have a, at least basic Java knowledge, to have an idea of what's happening on the video. This course is targeted not just for junior specialists. Even senior test automation specialists may find something useful, as we will exercise non-trivial cases sometimes. Also, a lot of samples will utilize object-oriented programming principles, especially while defining the design of our sample solution before implementing it. So. It is necessary for viewers to understand object-oriented programming basics. So, let's begin with the course, and I hope you'll enjoy it.